The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. My topic this evening is woe unto anyone through whom offense come. Woe to anyone through whom offense comes. See, it is impossible that offenses should not come. Especially when activities of people living in a particular period or generation are steep in evil. When you live in such an environment, you cannot say that no one will offend me. Or nothing will cause my displeasure. There are issues everywhere. Troubles in the family, among siblings, issues at home, issues at the workplace, issues everywhere. See, but the understanding that in life, things that cause offense are bound to happen is a good insulator against bitterness. See, brothers and sisters, ships don't sink because of the water around them. Ship sink because of the water that gets in them. See, don't let what is happening around you get into you. And weigh you down. You need to stay afloat all the time. And stay focused. How we have said that you can be very, very careful, but the other will be careless. So you can't control all the things around you. But make sure they don't get in you. So they will weigh you down. Ships do not sink. Because of water around them, they sink because of water that gets in them. Let me start from John chapter 2. I read from 23 to 25. John chapter 2, 23 to 25. Now, while he was in Jerusalem at the Passover festival, many people saw the signs he was performing and believed in him. And so, over Jerusalem, Chum Afasha no Sono, Aseno, Nipa Bebre, Nun in Centrenia, Oyoyeno, Waji, Nudin Edi. Now, many people saw the miracles that he was doing. Nipa Bebre, Nun Centrenia, no Oyen, and they believed in him. Now, Waji Nudi. Now, you see, the Bible has said it that simply. They believed in him. But if they saw the miracles he was performing, as a result of a cripple walking, lame, standing on their feet, jumping and leaping, they will be shouting and praising him. Yeah, they will be shouting and praising him. So the atmosphere there was so exalting so far as Jesus was concerned. 
Then verse 24 introduced the word but. You see, the, the signs and wonders and the praises, he didn't allow it to get into him. And the Bible will state why. But Jesus will not entrust himself to them. For he knew all people. He, he is well aware that these same people are saying, Praise the Lord, uh, hallelujah. By tomorrow, they will turn against you. He did not need any testimony about mankind. For he knew what was in each person. See, Jesus' action here teaches us to see people the way they really are. Without bitter criticism. Now, see human beings the way they really are. See, the individual without the grace of God is helpless in doing good. There is no good in people for us to trust ourselves to them. See many of the things that hurts us so badly in life. Like and gives us injury and grief and pain. Sense from the fact that we suffer illusion. Okay. We, we feel deceived and betrayed. So we are pained. Now we suffer injury. We are grieved. So what happened? See, anytime that you confine in a person, know that you have taken a risk. The person can be the chief counselor, but don't worry. If it's the fellow is a human being, maybe an apostle. And sometimes we even preach with the things you tell us. And then sometimes you have to watch whether the person is around or not. And so if you have a story in the voice, you come and say it at Agunan Sabah. And then you say the Agunan Sabah one at Atomic. That's what we do. And you can't say that we shouldn't say these things. Sometimes we will have to say them to open up what we are saying. So if you are called Kofi, we say we heard it from Abena. But when you are seated there, you know that hey, this man, it is my story. Anytime that you feel you have confided in a person, know that you have taken a risk. So that when somehow uh, what you said is played to the gallery, you don't get so pained. Because you spoke to a human being, not God. I'm not suggesting that when somebody confines in you, just throw it to the gallery. But I'm talking about the one who thinks he has confided in a human being. That please give some room. Give some room for leakage. Maybe five percent, ten percent. Men cases will be the new show more, but more than two nejer jemu. Then we move. What do we ask you to be more? And I say, I don't want to be so no. My queen ya kakra me dahon. Then we say we nipa. So we demand total perfection and justice from one another. And then when we don't get it, you become bitter, cruel, and sometimes very, very vindictive. Now, if we can read what is in the yellow, ready go. Yet we are demanding from a human being something that they cannot possibly give. See, the Lord Jesus trusted no one and never placed his faith in anyone. Yet, he was never suspicious or bitter at anyone. Because he knew what was in a human being. In our, in our trust, if we trust in human beings, 
we will end up despairing of everyone. Se ye di e hon e tu ni pa soa ye bu be fu anase o bi biara be di e hwamo. Even our spouses and our children. Ye be bre a bre ye nyere nom ene ye mampo. You can just look at the picture. Wa a hwe, ye ni a ye hwe. There is a boy trusting the father. We a ya bo fra a oji ne ja e di. But just as he threw himself the father ten I don't think this one was intentional because no father would want to do that. But maybe something took his attention. And then the young man, the boy, who maybe if he doesn't die, and maybe he will stay in the hospital for a while. I don't know. Now, if he trust ourselves to the hands of human beings, we will end up despairing of everyone. Even our spouses and our children. Now we set up standards for them and they keep failing because they never get to it. But Jesus wouldn't do that. See, our trust should rather be in God and what his grace can do for the human being. Otherwise, as humans in and of ourselves, we are bound to be disappointing one another. See, the many disappointments and the disillusions makes we face makes us cynical and overly critical in our judgment of others. Yeah, but understand this. That there is no good in a man. Yeah. But for Christ, there is no good in a man. So when, when you are setting standards, be careful because you are dealing with human beings. So you don't get always bitter fighting everybody. Please. Uh, give room for people's failings. Now, my friend also Chamber said this, and I want to quote. Never look for righteousness in the other person, but cease, but don't cease to be righteous yourself. So he's saying that, let me just pick that one again. Never look for righteousness in the other person, but never cease to be righteous yourself. Unquote. So never look for righteousness in the other person. Because you may not get it. But if you are conscious of righteousness, then you never cease to give righteousness. The problem of the world is when we always blame the other person. You always see a wife saying that it is you. And the man say it is you. Since Eden, we have never accepted our problems. And our Let us all be conscious of righteousness and right living. But always suspect that the other person may not be doing the right thing. So never look for righteousness in the other person. But Chambers is saying that, but never cease to be righteous yourself. We are always looking for justice. But the essence of Jesus' action is to teach us to never look for justice from the other 
but never cease to give justice. Yeah, but they are above not withstanding. Because what I'm trying to say is that give room for people's failings a bit. Otherwise, you fight with everyone. And sometimes everything. People even fight with mosquitoes. Sometimes people see mosquitoes, they are so angry. Why? See, I've seen some mosquitoes. Why do you have to use your whole fist chasing mosquitoes the whole night? Today we are to so nipa and don't move quite so one bit in ring him. And sometimes we spend quality energy on things that do not really matter. Today we are yes, say I want to one normal and we hear crowd. But having said this, we know you know. And I hope you have we have you've caught something. We did say when you are busy, I want to say this. You are making it. But do not spare those who disturb and distract the system. Or an institution. Such people must be dealt with. The Bible says, match such people and avoid them. Mark them, avoid them, but other times, deal with them. Give room for people's failings. But there are others who also always want to disturb the system directly. Now mark them. And avoid them. Or mark them. And deal with them. Romans 16, 17. Romans 16, 17 and 18. I urge you, brothers and sisters, to watch out for those who cause division and put obstacle in your way that are contrary to the teaching you have learned. Keep away from them. And so, and you know, me too much for say, Mon carry one, what them papa moon, a ba ah, what to see in Tidia, this say, Chetra, Mosiano. Now, Mon Chumu, if you want. Now, the other time we're saying that when we are talking about offenses, we don't mean to directly put obstacle in people's way. Now, only a cancer, say, a cancer, Sintidia, Yem Pesse, Yetresse, I wish that day, Sintidia too became. So, Paul is saying that watch out for those who cause division. They cause it. And they put obstacles in people's way. This one for Paul said, I didn't have to say that. I didn't have to say that. I didn't have to say that. And keep away from them. For such people are not serving our Lord Christ by their own appetites. By smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the minds of naive people. Sometimes people can directly go around mobilizing force, mark them and avoid them. To the to the piano bit me a cobwab when you pay no abuch and could not was say no ma says uncle for no soon. Na you won't wake you. No. When there's a challenge, when there's a problem that directly affects the system, deal with it. So how be awa eh ha edumekuo no anase ni pekuo na yehu eduma. First Corinthians five verse one. Yeshe Corinthians four homa edikani eti num efi yimu edikani no kwa noa. It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you, and of a kind that even pagans do not tolerate. A man is sleeping with his father's wife. Obe kanse eduma mo. And you are proud. Should, shouldn't you rather have gone into mourning and have put out of your fellowship the man who has been doing this? 
na mwire anho ama when you the oh yes idea no and free mumu. So give room for people's feelings. But those whose action directly affects the family, Paul is saying that get rid of them. And so one will subai no idea as say a jumakuno, smavo Paul say, Sha one song, na ye won't wake you. Second Timothy four, verse thirteen. Mummy and shit Timothy Homa, it tossum yeno, a tin na if you mu do me and san no echo. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Capus at trials and my scroll, especially the pitch, parchment. Now say, worry bar for Patakaria, me down a capo and chang a trow, and a muruku no ebreme, nititre, and a quam comu eno. Now the big one, verse 40. Alexander the metal worker did me a great deal of harm. The Lord will pay him for what he has done. This is the apostle. Now, I'm sure this Paul. man might have done something very, very bad to him. Yes. Alexander Verse 15. You too should be on your guard against him, the same person. So this is somebody who is not prepared to repent and he does things against the church and against men of God and he is not, he's non-repentant. And he says that you too, you should be on your guard against him because he strongly opposed our message. So, but why do people do shy away from discipline the Alexanders amongst us? Why do people fail to dis discipline the Alexanders at the workplaces? Hmm. Why? I didn't hear. You know, we have been uh, speaking from Luke chapter 17, verse 1. But that particular verse has two parts. Now, up until today, we have just been dealing with the first part, if you observe. Now, this is what the Bible says. Jesus said to his disciples, Things that cause people to stumble are bound to come. So this is what we have been dealing with all along. Yes, we can't say the for no say that is a day arrest in two years to a baby way and yet you won't come out busy and then I've deliberately not followed up with the last part. I'm gonna shut down. I mean to us. So I'm glad to talk about the last half <laughs> then and then we'll go back. Still talking about the first half in my next presentation. But woe to anyone through whom they come. so the enam no so The verse two says that it will be better for them to be thrown into the sea with a milestone tied around their necks than to cause one of these little ones to stumble. So watch yourself. If your brother or sister sin against you, rebuke them. And if they don't repent, if they do repent, forgive them. What was when you move your nunum and sana or say anka a ya on a say what de a yuma bo a chitrin or com cotto no chine a pumu sin a say or bet to kit to a yumu bako sintidia monchem hu ye na se wunya fum wa canenim na se or satra na junior facheno. Now, the verse, five, the verse one again. Jesus said to his disciples, "Things that cause people to stumble are bound to come, but woe to anyone through whom they come." So, woe to anyone through whom the offense comes. Either directly, indirectly, or imaginary. Say, Once someone feels offended, you, the offender, 
woe unto you. Kwa imbiara enam so ebe kwa kwa tu ubi sintidu ya nwenfaho se ye wara ana wodi nam ubi so wa watu nipani sintidu ya no unedwe. So perceived offenders are confronted with woes. Enti wwa ye gwin po se wadi sintidu ya bi e tu ya kwe munu wonye. Na so grievous distress uh, is waiting for them. And your how ni yao ene amani hunu bebri e kwen wo. Na affliction is waiting for such people. And wama ebe edi yao bebri e wong e kwen wo. Trouble and persecution are waiting for perceived offenders. Or how any ota e kwen sa ni pei. Because of the woes that confront offenders, people want to play it safe. He said, "Say nipa what to sin tidu yano or how ni amani e say e kwen wanti no ya na nipa mpese what to obi sin tidu." And sometimes at the expense of the organization or the expense of the home. Ne to de bia wo ye wo ya wan hwa na de or how any amani e brief tidu yano ebusu yano ana djuma kuo no. So sometimes we see evil, but we turn our face to the other side as if we have not seen anything. And ye to de bia ye hu se ni bone ko so na nso na ye twi ye ni. There is a reason to that. Because sometimes people are afraid of the woes. Apostle Osman Zabri once said, and I quote, He said, When the Apostle Osman Zabri once said, and I quote, He said that there are some people you better, you better offend God than to offend them. There are some people you rather offend God than to offend them. You see, and David is well aware of this. See, what God gave him some three scenarios as to how he wants to punish him and Israel. And then he chose the one that God uh, that had, you say, let me fall in your own hands. You don't let me fall in the hands of human beings. Because the human being is very, very wicked. And so, uh, the apostle is saying that there are certain people you better offend God than to offend them. They will pester your life. Yeah. They will bother you consistently with petty annoyance. They can cause real trouble for you. See, at the workplace, they can mastermind your... They will suck you. you. You'll be there and then a letter will come to you because people feel that you have offended the system and they want to get you out. Okay. In extreme cases, they can cause calamity to befall you. See, one day, Debbie. Amnon raped Tamar the beautiful sister of Absalom. I'm not sure. Tama, I don't die. Then Absalom was very angry and bitter. Now we na aye Absalom ya wiye pa. He saw his brother Amnon as the offender. Onhuni nia Amnon no se ono eno dem from swa no aba. What did he do? He raped the sister. But after two years, he Absalom killed Amnon. Now so if you know Ejin Absalom, Eko Kum Amnon. Amnon raped the sister. The woman is say Amnon or she ni nyaba and then die. Absalom revenge by killing his brother. Absalom ni a oye di tuya ne kane say okum ni nyaba man. Because of this. Wainti. People want to save their skins. Nipa pese o ji wo hu. At the detriment of a whole organization. Now we and your say ye a ba a juma kuoke see it. At the detriment of a whole nation. Then you be a omani ni na be say. And sometimes your your wife will call you and say that please keep quiet. The company is not for you. <laughs> she doesn't want any trouble. Yes, yeah, so just do your work. The company is not for you. So if you have seen it, don't don't say anything, because she's afraid. Of the attack, the woes 
that is going to come upon you. Are you ready? Say that. I hope you understand me. So we are saying that try and give room for people's failings. Because we are human beings. But that's not withstanding. Individuals who are directly affecting an organization or a home should be dealt with. You must whip them to line. And then we are saying that why do people shy away from bringing discipline in organizations and even at home? Now, I didn't think I can be a one person who be seeing the bar or ha abusiano and as a jumaku. The apostle Paul said that look at the deviant act of this person, deviant act of this person. Yet, you people are beholding and you don't want to say anything. So, my Paul says, you are brabba, then we are bar and for quemu and in your mass among court. Now, so much, I didn't hear they want to save the earth. For per se, one person how be a beba one so it's not easy. To open your mouth in the midst of perversion. Because some woes will be awaiting. You. But one day, Phinehas. And so there be Phinehas. What he did actually stopped the anger of God. We are praying that God will give us a lot of finishes in our day. Scripture says that there were some people of faith who did not love their life even unto death. For them, theirs was the glory of God. Not to save their lives. Give room for people's failings. But Never fail to treat people in line when there is a need. Now, so so fuma a yasa or tinitin wa tia wong. Don't save your skin. Men yes, oh, you and me because of the afflictions and the troubles that may come upon you. And now, a mania and I eat or you need a bit me about twenty. I want to end here. But send me this here. That we all pray for a good heart. To be able to accommodate people's failings. But there are some Alexanders that you still need to discipline. Some may be our children. The others, we may find them in our, at our workplaces. Let us deal with them. Let's save the organization. Let's save the home. Don't don't let us be afraid of the afflictions and the troubles that may come upon us. Because righteousness will exalt a nation. Righteousness will still exalt a home. Now, Righteousness will exalt a church. Righteousness will exalt everything. Shall we rise to our feet? And let us pray. That God will help us. That He will strengthen us by the power of His Spirit. To grant us hearts. To understand human beings. So that their failings will not bring us a lot of disappointment. So that we are not bitter at everything that people do. Let's learn from Jesus. Who will not entrust himself into anyone. Yeah, because he knows what is in a human being. But that notwithstanding. The Bible says still mark people. And avoid them, people who so discord Nipa. and put obstacles in our way.